my dear students today I would be taking up meningites and a specific form of meningites called as the tubercular meningites we have to distinguish various form of meningites the bacterial meningites the viral meningites and the tuberculous meningites as far as tubercular meningitis is concerned there are certain important facts you have to remember about mycobacterium tuberculosis as an organism first as far as microbiology of mycobacterium tuberculosis is concerned you are well aware of the fact that Robert Koch is credited with the discovery of mycobacterium tuberculosis and this organism belongs to the category of obligate aerobe that's very important, sometimes asked as a one-liner. In action, you have to remember that it is an acid-fast bacillus and it grows in algae, Longston Johnson medium. Algae is used for culture of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Well aware of the fact that lungs are the most common organs involved and from here tuberculosis can affect any part of the body. Once it affects the brain, it causes tubercular meningitis, especially the meninges of the brain. And it affects the leptomeninges, the subarachnoid space, the arachnoid matter, and the pia matter to be more specific. The dura matter is usually speared, and we call the combination of arachnoid matter and the pia matter as leptomeninges. So basically, tuberculous meningitis affects the leptomeninges. Now, important fact is that the classic signs of headache, fever, myalgia, malaise, photophobia may or may not be seen. Tubercular meningitis can be a long-standing illness developing after a period of time. Now, as far as the characteristic features of patients presenting with tuberculous meningitis are concerned and the CSF analysis which would be shown. So what the question frequently asked are the CSF features of tuberculous meningitis and it would more or less resemble viral meningitis in the fact that there will be mononuclear cells present and there will be lymphocytic pleocytosis. This lymphocytic pleocytosis is a cardinal and characteristic feature of tuberculous meningitis in addition to the fact that there might be increased protein levels not as significant as acute bacterial meningitis and sugar levels might be decreased not as severe as bacterial meningitis and the chloride levels would be decreased as well. Now pathologically what are the characteristic features of tuberculous meningitis? You can be having widespread exudation exudation at especially the base of the brain and along the course of the cranial nerves in addition the subarachnoid space as I earlier mentioned would be affected and it can be affected in the form of subarachnoidites and there will be exudates within the subarachnoid space in addition there might be an inflammation of the ventricles of the brain ventriculites Typically, some cases may present with enlargement of the ventricles of the brain, causing ventricular megaly and subsequent hydrocephalus. And the hydrocephalus will be communicating type. There might be calcification in long-standing cases of tubercular meningitis. So the presence of hydrocephalus, calcification, ventriculites, basal exudates would more favor a picture of tubercular meningitis as far as clinical scenarios are concerned. Now tubercular skin tests may be negative so a patient with tubercular meningitis if you do a skin test tuberculin skin test that might be negative that does not rule out tuberculosis be well aware of this fact the CSF shows classic acid fast bacillus in it and CSF culture would also reveal mycobacterium tuberculosis then tuberculosteric acid levels in CSF should be monitored and CSF PSR would be a rapid sensitive and specific investigation for tubercular meningitis. Now what would a case scenario 
give you in addition to all, some of these facts you have to remember that previous illness of tuberculosis whether it is the tuberculosis of the chest you have to have the history of the patient previous illness previous tubercular infection family history of tuberculosis or a chest radiograph depicting active focus in the lungs previously would give you or aid you in the diagnosis of tuberculous meningitis if not always. These are some of the important facts about tubercular meningitis and I hope that you have heard, with, heard with me with a lot of concentration and this will greatly help you in answering and differentiating various types of meningitis. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks.